So we'll move on to few case scenarios and then I'll uh, wind up. So first, first line, yeah, next line. So yeah, this is a child with uh, Down syndrome. We all know the features are typical round faces, hypertrichorism, upslanting, palpebrals. You all know the diagnosis. But again, this is just a clinical diagnosis. Why is it important to do karyotyping in these children? Because, next slide. Karyotyping can be any of these. All these can be a uh, karyotyping result of the previous child. So it is like non-disjunction. The first picture, 1, 2, 3, and 21. That means it is a pure trisomy 21. Why is it important to know? Because there are other conditions like translocations where in the second picture, you can see 21 region, there are only two chromosomes. But again, in the 14 region, you can see 14 over 21, extra 21 is sitting on the 14. And in the third picture, you can see if you count 21 region, it will look like one and two. But there is a third chromosome sitting on 21, 21st chromosome itself. This is These are tri translocations. Next slide. Why is this important? Because knowing this, we can detect the recurrences. A first child with pure trisomy 21, 1, 2, 3, the recurrence risk is very low. But again, 14, 21 translocation if the baby has and the parents of our carriers of that translocation, then the recurrence can even go up to 100%. To know the recurrences for simple uh, diagnosis like Down syndrome, we need a genetic diagnosis. So in a family with a child with Down syndrome, do a carrier typing. If it is translocation, do parental chromosomes. If parents are carriers, recurrence is high, high offer prenatal diagnosis by chorionic villa sampling or amniocentesis. If the parents are normal, then the translocation is accidental. You can reassure the family recurrence is low. If the karyotyping of the index child is pure trisomy 21, recurrence risk is low, they can either, that is one less than 1%, they can take indirect testing or direct testing if they don't want to take that 1% risk also.